I'm an artist, I'm a designer, and all things in between. I'm obsessed with creating things, and I'm constantly trying to make sense of things that don't make sense. We all have a relationship with things and talk to things all the time. When we pick up a pen, that's us saying, perfect, you're useful for this. And we also have alternative dialogue with the things we reject. Sorry, Techstar, maybe next time. When you're wearing a knit and it's a little bit scratchy and you think, oh, why did I buy this? That's us having a conversation with the piece and responding. But the way we view things can also change and shift. As a kid, I grew up around lots of stuff. Some stuff I use regularly, while other stuff stayed in the same place for years. But what happens when you're not using something for its intended purpose? Does the definition of a thing have an expiry date? Is a toothbrush really a toothbrush if you're not brushing your teeth with it? These are the thoughts that made me first interested in what happens when you strip an object of its meaning. Oh, what is that? Thingamabob. A thingamabob is a human glitch. When you can't define something instantaneously, it's that initial dialogue with an object that confuses us. I've spent a lot of time thinking about thingamabobs and how they inform my practice, so much so that the slogan for my fashion brand is for the imaginative. When you design without a prescribed form, function, and purpose, you get to create your own meaning. Plain surfaces in ancient and Greek design functioned as a bed, table, chair, and beyond. And an elevated slab of concrete was filled with infinite possibility. Interacting with this simplicity would allow for new design to be developed through mistakes, curiosities, and absurdness. If you had ever seen my furniture before and thought how different it is for my fashion, you wouldn't be the first person. But as a matter of fact, there's a uniting principle underlying the two. By creating overly minimal furniture and super maximal fashion, I'm actually taking us away from the comfortable middle. Creating in this way might look a little strange or different, but as a matter of fact, you're able to create things that you never would have thought possible. This is my first object. I called it Tria. Tria is made of four equilateral triangles iPhones have a search capability that allow for you to take photos of things like a table, and all the tables pop up. So to go against these principles, I would take photos of my mini prototypes, almost like building one leg of a table at a time. If or so the software could identify my prototype as a traditional piece of furniture, such as a table, I'd go back a step and undo the design. Eventually, I realized that the software was generating anything as tables, with a plain surface. So, as the final stage of the design, I introduced cutouts into the top. I wanted to hack the processes that assign definition to a piece to create unclassifiable matter. Creating in this way was a great way of deprogramming my brain. In a world where everything has definition, undoing the definition of things allowed for me to create new meaning. Tria never stays a thingamabob. It lives in a limbo until the user assigns it meaning, meaning you get to fill things out and you get to create something new. Tree art to my camera roll is a thingamabob, but it's also a table and a sculpture piece, meaning a table can now look and function differently. Thingamabobs also allow for sustainable thought. In the fashion industry, everything has minimum order quantities, meaning you're going to end up with waste. How do you deprogram your brain to see excess material outside of its initial intended purpose? This year, I drove to the archive of iconic artist and designer Linda Jackson. In rummaging through her archive, I found a box of thousands of tags that were 42 years old. They were too cute and shiny to keep hidden, so I took them back to the studio and began stitching them together. The moment two tags were stitched, they were no longer a tag. They were a thingamabob and the piece grew big and voluminous until its found resource had ended, turning a once-defined tag into a functional runway piece shown in Australian Fashion Week 42 years later. Thingamabobs also allow for us to create new value. Objects hold the value that we assign to it. As a kid, I grew up to the kufeta that sat on my family's mantelpiece all these years. Kufeta are ceremonially gifted at Greek weddings, and a white, sugar-coated almonds wrapped in decorative tulle. I wanted to give the kufeta or bombardiera 
new context and meaning that held significance and value to me. So I unraveled the tools into a big pile of thingamabobs. Eventually, I compressed the tools and the big pile of thingamabobs into an artwork called Kufeta. Kufeta now exists as an artwork in a gallery and converts a once domestic object into something with new cultural significance. So thingamabobs don't, also, don't have to be physical objects either. They can be ideas we've learned throughout our lives. As a kid, I grew up to the story of the Trojan horse through Greek mythology. The Trojan horse symbolizes to have breakthroughs, to take down established meanings. I turned everything into the Trojan horse, from set designs, runways, collaborations, and even made it my brand's logo. In turning something that already had its own meaning, something I knew so well, into a thingamabob, the Trojan horse became a perfect way of summing up what I do and what my work represents. Sometimes the ideas we're looking for are something that's right in front of you. You just have to see and look at it differently. When I first started creating, I wanted to create things with endless possibility. In a world where everything has a definition, thingobobs gave me a chance to create new meaning. When you next have a glitch, I urge you to think thingobob. When you next make something, call it a thingobob and let it be anything. Say and think thingobob instead. You never know where it will lead you.